Hello everyone, uh, I just wanted to make another video because um, as some of you have probably seen I did a recording with Richard D Hall last week and as part of that um, he included some material from this website, uh, I, I don't particularly care for the name and uh, when you play the video it's got like a, 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 a pig you know, sort of funny sound effect at the beginning which is a bit distracting but that said it's a very good video well researched and uh, offers some interesting information and that's what I want to talk about for a few minutes and play a clip you know which was uh, highlighted in, in these one of these videos uh, to you and it concerns uh, Dr Hannah Fry who has done quite a bit of presenting for the BBC and I mentioned Dr. Hannah Fry in another posting, an article that I did a good while ago um, regarding the Hazelmere experiment. So yes, uh, she was involved in this Hazelmere um, experiment, or whatever you want to call it, which was the subject of this program, which was uh, broadcast in 2018, I think. You can check all the dates. And it was last broadcast on the 14th of March 2020. And of course, this was after the talk of uh, the coronavirus thing had started. But it was before, well, it was just after the declaration of the pandemic, actually. So, you know, some peculiar uh, synchronicities here, to say the least. Uh, and, you know, you can, I, I'll include these links in the documentary, uh, to the documentary in the YouTube description. You can go and watch those if you want. Uh, because somebody's posted the whole thing, so you can make of it what you will. But uh, what I wasn't aware of until I was with um, Richard last week is that Hannah Fry was also involved in these Royal Institute Christmas lectures um, from December 2019. So, um, for example, you can see here these lectures at the Royal Institution website, and you can access them there as well. Um, Funnily enough, the title is uh, Secrets and Lies, and the Pig Huey researcher, I'm not sure of their real name or whether they've revealed it, and I, so I don't particularly care for the name, although I suppose it's sort of a, some kind of version of, um, you know, bullshit, I think is what they've derived their name from, a more polite version of that, perhaps. Um, so I can see the logic. Um but I wanted to pl I'll play this section. They include this section in their video, but include some overlays onto it. So I'll just play this section from the video, and uh, you can make of it what you will. And this, as I say, is from December 2019. So we're talking two, three months before all the talk of this started. And look what's shown in this video very carefully. But OK, if you can accept that being right isn't always possible, if you can really understand these numbers, then you can still use them to your advantage. Because sometimes luck really is a matter of life and death, or in this case, zombies. So uh, to explain this properly, I would like you to join me in giving a warm welcome to an epidemiologist from the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, Ros Ego. Okay, Roz, you, you study the mathematics of disease, right? How exactly. much of it is luck and chance? Well, there's a lot of chance that's involved in the transmission of disease. So if there's an epidemic happening at the moment, the chance of you getting it depends on how many other people there are that have the uh, infection at the time. And then if you happen to meet one of those, which is more likely when there's a lot of people um, who have it, there's also a chance you'll get it from them or not. And if you have some pre-existing immunity, maybe you've been vaccinated or you've had it before, then the chance of them passing it to you also goes down. So there's a lot. So then how can maths help you? Mm. It's really difficult to predict on an individual level if somebody will get it. But on a population level with these nice big numbers, there's some things we can predict. When the epidemic will go up and when it will come down, we try and predict the peak and we try and predict which groups might be at risk of infection. Well, talking of epidemics, mm. there are some rumours of a zombie apocalypse about to hit. Um, OK, so everyone here, underneath your seats, you should have a, uh, a zombie mask and you should have some ping pong balls. Now these, these are your zombie germs. Mm -hmm. So how it works is if a zombie germ touches you, you become a zombie, you put up your zombie mask 
and then you take your zombie germs and you throw them straight up in the air as high as you possibly can. Okay? And in a moment, I'm going to start off this infection. So everyone start with your mask down um, to kick us off. Mm. But you can make a prediction about what might happen here. Mm. So over here, nobody has any protection against zombie, zombie infection. So we're going to expect a lot of cases and possibly quite quickly. Okay, all right, let's give it a go. Is everyone ready? Everyone got their balls in their hand? All right, we're going to start this infection. Here's the zombie germs coming at you. Yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm directly targeting people. Okay, oh, already. So we've got little, actually a few different patches here. We do, yeah, but it's starting to get a little bit frightening around here. And it's traveling backwards mm -hmm. through, the, and now forwards. A big cluster of zombies there right in the middle. Uh -huh. <laughs> how realistic is what they're doing compared to how, norm, to, to how real diseases spread? Um, well, obviously, for real diseases, it's not quite so frightening as ha what's happening up here. <laughs> but we use similar type of methods using chance to pass on infection to understand how real diseases spread around. But for zombie infections, nobody ever recovers. Nobody, okay. And that's, in the real world, people usually recover. I think there are, in fact, okay, so if you... <laughs> it's still going. It is still going. Okay. Um, if you are... Uh, not a zombie, could you stand up for us? How many people are there? Oh, we've got Just some. A, a, a three people who managed to escape the zombie battle. <laughs> <laughs> you also can't target people directly with your zombie germs. That wasn't part of the no, problem. Wasn't. Okay, um, everybody sit down. Thank you very much. Well done. Um, now, we can do this again, mm -hmm. but this time we can use some kind of zombie defenses. Exactly, yeah. So over here, there's going to be some protection against infection. And these people are going to be completely protected. Okay, so those of you who have, you've got protective masks under your seat. And this makes you completely immune from zombie infections. It does, yep. Okay, so if the, the zombie germs touch you and you're wearing a face mask, uh, you're wearing a protective mask, don't worry about anything. Don't put up your, don't put up your zombie mask, don't throw any germs around. Um, you're, you're, you're completely immune. And we'll see, how, we'll see what happens now. And what so... Um the other thing I wanted to highlight from the PQE video, which I thought was uh, also on a similar theme, very disconcerting, was that Hannah Fry includes this quotation in the lecture. I think it's that same lecture. I don't, I don't have the time code for it. She, Hannah Fry, Dr. Hannah Fry says, if you've got the maths on your side, or if you've got maths on your side, it's not just about spotting patterns. It's about using what the numbers tell you to bend the world to your will. Now, isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting? And also in the video by Pig uh, is a little bit of a look at uh, Hannah Fry. And this particular picture, which was used to promote the 2019 Christmas lectures, was taken, I think, in the foyer of the Royal Institute, where they have the lectures. And I shouldn't need to tell those of you who have done bits of research uh, the significance of the background. But of course, this is allegedly Masonic. Well, it's not allegedly, it is Masonic symbolism. You, you can take whatever uh, note of that that you wish. But uh, here she is on uh, a checkerboard pattern. Similarly, what was highlighted in the video was another PR shot that was taken. I think you can see she's got the same jacket on here. Uh, she appears to have a dark top on rather than a light one, which is interesting because here she's got a, a light top and in this image she's got a dark top with the same blue jacket. And um, she has this peacock feather and, and the video, video, the Piccadilly video goes into a bit more detail, but um, on Hannah Fry's Instagram, because this is her own Instagram that she posted this, this photo from the promo photo shoot doesn't actually have very much to do with anything but the colours look excellent with my hair and we all know that's what's really important here. Of course, she's been a bit light-hearted about it, but I think there's a very much more serious side to this image and there's a good example of that in the Pig Hui video and some comparisons uh, and I'm sure that many of the viewers already know what this means. And so just to finish off... Um, I will note that uh, Richard D. Hall um, has posted two videos now, actually he posted another one just before I made this video. Uh, he decided to post these, I think, in successive days, actually, um, because we recorded these last week and uh, 
he's decided to post them. So there's um, one video that we did about the UFO issue. Uh, so you can go on over and watch that if you want. I, I've, I have talked about that in some of my videos, some of the core uh, issues that we were discussing there. But Rich has done a brilliant video of putting all that together. And he picked up some things that I, some things that I hadn't noticed. So you can go and watch that. And then we he also put together a lot more information on the COVID scam. Uh, and that's definitely worth watching too. And uh, I also wanted to mention that uh, somebody sent me this Catherine Austin Fitz video, which is fairly recent, I think it's about two weeks old, uh, talking a little bit about 11th of September, or that's, she was at a conference whose theme was that. This was in the Netherlands. I haven't watched the whole conference. But this is a very good sort of 20-minute video of some of the serious issues that people should be considering. And she does, for example, mention uh, technologies, and she does a particularly good, succinct discussion of the CBDC, the Central Bank Digital Currency, and plays a clip. And this is something that Richard included in his discussion as well. So these two go together pretty well. Um, so there's that. Another video that was sent to me, or rather a web page with a video on it, was uh, some quite harrowing accounts by Australian nurses. These nurses seem to be in Queensland, I think, either mainly or exclusively, uh, and they're giving quite a bit of testimony about what's been happening with the jab in their experience, and of course uh, it isn't at all good. Um, so that was really just meant to be a quick sort of summary of things, and uh, I hope you found that useful. The links will be in the description. You can contact me through the website as usual. Um, so I hope you find that uh, of some use and, and, and perhaps you'll share this information. Uh, you can, of course, uh, go to the uh, Odyssey webpage here in case the YouTube videos get uh, you know, deleted or blocked or whatever, or the channel goes gets taken out. Uh, there's a backup on Odyssey. I still hope they improve the search on this, but the, the videos are all here for you, so you can subscribe there as a backup if you wish and uh, then it's sort of going into the blockchain there so um i'll leave that with you for now thanks again for watching and for caring and i appreciate the support i've received um following you know what i said in the rich planet video the first one uh, i've received quite a few messages which have been quite moving so thank you very much for those that have uh, sent those and um so i wish you all the best for now and uh, take care Oh,